It's number 42 in black. Sliding that hand up. I don't know. I don't know. David Taylor. I don't know if... Oh, well, there it is. Coming in late now. Looked like it wasn't Taylor. Looked like it was the fellow I couldn't see his number. Came in right after him. First and 10 at the 38. Quarterback still with it. Peter Tom Willis out left side. Sliding catch. Terry Anthony. He shows us exactly what kind of player he is. He's got great hands. He's a possession receiver. He's not as explosive as Ronald Lewis on the other side, but that's the kind of ball they like to deliver to number eight. Well, you may wonder about the coverage here, Bobby. And a guy like this, yeah, Anthony, running right. free against man-to-man -man when the play action works yeah, and they bite right. on it and they roll out. There's no pressure whatsoever yeah, on Peter right. Tom and the receivers. It's man-to-man -man coverage. This guy's just wide open. First down now across midfield at the 45 of South Carolina. Holding the football close in is Marion Butts. 248 pounds of him near the end zone. He is so big, 6'1", 248. They took about 10 or 12 yards to get him down. 45 yards on the carry. They just caved this thing in. Ayanata and Mike Morris on the left side. Watch the hole that opens up here to the right of your screen. Look at this. That's Ayanata, number 69. And then look out, because here comes Marion and his butts all the way to the half-yard line. <laughs> <laughs> Not as tall as the fridge, but pretty tough to bring down. First and goal at the one. Butts has it, and he is into the end zone. Florida State has done it again, and Joe Morrison's Gamecocks are on the verge of being blown away here at home well before halftime. Great work up front by Jason Kuypers and Pat Tomberlin. They're the two good ones on the right side of that Florida State line. Tomberlin, of course, the returning All-American at right tackle. I think you have to remember, this, this was the number one team in the nation, and if not for the Miami loss, they would still be the number one team in the nation. Pretty good football team. Well, one thing Richie Andrews can do, that's drill the extra points. 41 state straight this year. Alan, we'll give you another look at number 31. Well, there's no surprise here. This is just, they call him a masher. That's their uh, description of him, and he, he mashed his way in there. 423, second quarter. It's 28 to nothing. Florida State on top, 28 nothing. The student athlete of the game brought to you by the U.S. Army. Get an edge on life. Be all you can be. Tonight's recipient, Florida State tight end Dave Roberts. Dave has a 3.5 great point average in public relations. He's also caught a touchdown pass. In the classroom on the field, Dave Roberts doing the job for Florida State. Guy looked just like him, didn't he? That's right. <laughs> Down to the 10-yard line, it's Robert Brooks. Hit hard and stopped. 24-yard line, and South Carolina will start there. What about the results of the home team miscues tonight? Only once have they not given up points after a turnover or a mistake. Are we going to have enough pages for the South Carolina misery index tonight? Can we fit that all on one page? I don't know. I think we better go out and get a case of Kleenex. We talk about misery here. We're not even to the half yet. It's a proud program, South Carolina. 15th in the nation and really taking it on the chin. 4-16 before halftime. Time for a drive. Mike Dingle and Keith Bing are the running backs behind Todd Ellis. Dingle, who threw the interception last series, diving up near the 30-yard line. Felton Hayes, the inside linebacker, on the stop as the clock continues to run. Number 46, the number two tackler on the FSU defense that came in giving up 305 yards, 17 points per game. You may wonder who the second team quarterback for South Carolina is. Dickie DeMasi is his name. He's a sophomore. He's just not ready to play yet. Dingle again. 
trying to work behind the block of George Rush, number 14. Strong safety Stan Shiver and cornerback Dion Primetime Sanders in on the stop. It'll be third and short. Anthony Morse, number 99, pass coverage guy, not great against the run. And that's why he's in there. Didn't do a bad job. Actually forced the thing wide. But he's really more of a pass defender. You'll see a lot of them in this game now because they'll have their pass defense in on most downs, leading by 28 points. They did get a first down on the play, and Dingle will carry for good yardage. Five, maybe six yards for Al Gro, Joe Morrison, and the South Carolina offense. Florida State now leading 28-0. 75-yard drive took only five plays, just over two minutes. Marion Butts with a big run of 40 yards, and then the one-yard tumble for the score. Second and five, just over the 40-yard line. Dingle again. Looks like a first down. If they mark it where he got the football to before he was pushed back, Odell Haggins. In on the stop. Well, Florida State's going to give them the run at this point. And uh, if you go up to the line and they're giving you the run, you most likely will take it. With 2.45 to go, they'll never run the ball into the end zone from their own 45-yard line. Florida State's going to play the pass, give them five, six yards on the ground, and sit back there and see if they can pick off another one. Almost 100 different in the total yard category. First down at the 45. Here they come, Haggins, and then on the left side, 59 is Keith Carter, a backup inside linebacker. Odell Haggins with the initial pressure, and then Carter for his first sack of the year coming off the left side. Well, one of the problems here is the play action. Your backs are out of the picture here. They're faking the run. Watch 59. Right from the left side, nobody blocks them. And Ellis is hit. And you can see that they're happy, but this is shooting fish in a barrel now with a 28-point lead. Forget play action. Dingle. Tumbling ahead for a couple of yards off the left side. Keith Carter again. In on the stop. Deion Sanders unpiling. Bobby Bowden had no way of contemplating what this situation might be approaching halftime. 28 nothing on the road with a minute 20 remaining. If you're wondering about his remaining schedule, next week it's Virginia Tech at Tallahassee. And then, of course, right after Thanksgiving, it is Florida at Tallahassee. They'll have a week off between games 10 and 11. Third and 16. And nobody will catch up with that one. Anthony Parler, the split end, being watched by Leroy Butler. And the Gamecocks will have to kick it, get off the field without getting hurt, and get into the locker room and get reorganized. Well, again, you've got a problem here, though. Now, you've got to maximum protect your punter. They've already blocked one. That means you've got to use a tight formation. And you've got Deion Sanders back here as a world-class sprinter. You can't cover it. Flags fly as it looked like the Seminoles were offside. Kick squirts out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. Looked like Phil Carollo, who blocked the kick earlier, might have been a little too quick off the right side. Offside, defense. That's actually a good play. With fourth down and 15 to go, it's a free shot. You try to anticipate the snap count and just go. Because they only get five yards, they won't get a first down. So we're 57 seconds away from halftime. And coming up, Tim Brando standing by with scores and highlights. All the big teams in the top four or five were big winners today. What a thrilling telecast from Stillwater, Oklahoma, as the Sooners, with a little bit of luck at the end, held on to beat those resurgent Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Pat Jones has a good program going there now. It was a tough play at the end there. They almost had a chance, like a, a lunar eclipse or something, every time you beat Oklahoma. You have to wait 15 years for a shot. Jolie Dunn waiting to get into the locker room to talk to his defense. But the offense has to shoulder a lot of the blame tonight as well. 
Well, the defense is at a loss because of the score. They didn't play all that poorly early. The big bomb, of course, hurt them, but they really, when they're this far behind, they're hurting. Dexter Carter and Dane Williams are the backs for Florida State. Peter Tom Willis once more. Rifles it ahead. The ball is over the 35 to Bruce Lassane. Number 88, a 6'4 junior, catching his 15th pass of the year. They will rotate four receivers in and out of there. Rotate some tight ends. 16 yards right on his average on that reception. Seminoles are not content with 28 zip. Now they give it to Dexter Carter. Cuts up beautifully over the 40, then the 45, out to the 47-yard line. Seminoles will spend their second time out and have one remaining with 28 seconds left before halftime. Florida State trying to add to the 28-0 lead. One will be tough to get here tonight. Joe Morrison got his 100th victory at NC State a week ago, but his team is down 28-0. 28 seconds left as Bobby Bowden's offense definitely looking for more points here. Peter Tom Willis. And way too far down the left side, Dexter Carter out of the backfield was motoring down the sideline. Marty Dye, the freshman redshirt at left tackle, pressuring the passer. Carter, number 13, just a little guy, 5'9", 168, push him around a little bit. And a ball overthrown. That, would, that hit would have to have been before the ball was thrown. That's what the Seminole coaches were mad about, Kev. They thought the ball was in the air, and he had been obstructed. It would almost be inhuman to call a penalty on South Carolina now. 80% passer is Peter Tom Willis tonight. He played the first quarter against South Carolina in 86, went four for seven, and then got knocked silly. Chip Ferguson came on to pace the Seminoles to the victory after that as they won it 45-28. But it doesn't look like Peter Tom Willis unless he gets knocked silly again here tonight will need such help. Well, you may wonder why Florida State is trying to score so diligently here at the end of the half. Well, the reason is the national polls. And here's a team that started out on top, would like to get back to number one. They do have a chance to get back to number one, albeit a slim chance. But I think they're thinking points. South Carolina's a quality team. The bigger the score is, the more attention they're going to garner in the national polls and the better shot they'll have at the end of the year. Third down and 10. They'll give it to Dexter Carter. He's got a first down. Then he gets out of bounds. Eight seconds remaining. And they're down inside the 40-yard line. Now, remember, they have a long-range kicker who's very erratic. So who knows what Bobby might try here? One of the reasons Sammy Smith has been on the bench is this little guy. He's a tremendous receiver. You see his running skills very quick and out of bounds. And you'll be seeing him for a while. He's a youngster. First down at the 39. Wide to the right, Lawrence Dawsey. Wide to the left, Bruce Lassane. In the eye with eight seconds remaining. They want to unload it and get it out of bounds and get a field goal try. And that's what they do. And we have a flag, and it might be roughing or a late hit by Ron Rabune, which could push them down far enough to use their short range and more accurate kicker, Bill Mason. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense, first down. Ron Rabune trying to make something happen did, but the wrong way. He hurt himself, lost his footing. Now that is a little overzealous out of bounds. He doesn't go for the head. I don't There's think no that would have been called, but that's so apparent when right. he go for the head. And of course, as you said, the penalty put him in excellent field goal range. He might be shook up mainly from his collision with the bench, not from the collision with Bruce Lassane. Bill Mason is on. He's four for six. His longest on the year is 35. This will be a 32 attempt from near the left hash mark. And it is through. So Florida State at the buzzer with a field goal and the first half is over. 31-0 Seminoles over the Gamecocks. The folks in Columbia are in shock. 
We'll find out if Tim Brando feels the same way. Tim? <laughs> you bet. I'm, uh, I'm sure uh, Joe Morrison is saying to himself, gee, I know I'm the man in black, but it's a pretty black man. Deanna Tech, you dropped in the UPI this week. Same story. Well, we, we have played well tonight. Our defense has played real well and set up a lot of scores. And uh, we're, we're playing good. I hope we can keep it up. Peter Tom Willis, you thought he might be nervous coming in. So what do you do? You throw deep his first pass and he responds with a touchdown. Yeah, that took all the nervousness out on his second play of the game. Probably the greatest thing that could have happened to him uh, and under that situation. Okay, thanks very much, Coach. Back up there, Bob. All right, Chris, thanks a lot. And back upstairs with Kevin Kiley, I'm Bob Carpenter. And again, I ask, what about Peter Tom Willis? <laughs> How about Peter Tom Willis? Well, I, you got to give Florida State's offensive people a lot of credit for calling this play and letting Peter Tom air it out here. You know, the game is in, in, is in doubt. There's no score at the point. Second play of the game, and they let him throw it. And, of course, that pressure defense, you live and die with it. Here they died with it. Willis was right on right on the numbers there all the way down and they did a great job and they've done a great job really blocking for him here he had people in his face but he stood right in there and threw the ball and I think one of the keys to the game was how would he respond Bobby he has responded and responded and responded all right so you go into the locker room at home great crowd on hand all the atmosphere suddenly down the tubes it's 31 nothing what are the Gamecocks possibly doing in this situation? I'll tell you what you have to do. You have to be positive. A great coach, and Joe Morrison is one of the fine coaches mm -hmm. in the country. You have to be positive. You find positive things to do, to talk about, and you come out, and you try to get your confidence back and set yourself for the following weeks. Chances of getting back in this game really realistically not good, but you've got to find good things to talk about, and you've got to play well in the second half. And you hope that your quarterback does the things you hope he can do. Keep control of himself, his offense, and the game. He's been unable to do any one of those three here tonight. And that's what Joe Morrison says is the key for Todd Ellis. This is Colin Mackey, who does some of the place kicking. He also kicks off some. Dexter Carter is number 13. And number 27 back with him is senior tailback Victor Floyd. They'll kick it short. The ball will come down at the 20-yard line. And up over the 30 to the 32 is Keith Ross, a tailback, also a senior. First half statistics. There's the passing yardage. Big advantage there in the rushing yardage and total yardage as well. Turnovers, the bottom line of that first half for the home team. They had a big misery index in the first 30 minutes. So Florida State offensively behind quarterback Peter Tom Willis, a 6'3 junior from Morris, Alabama. Sammy Smith and Dane Williams are the backs. Williams the fullback. Sammy Smith is the tailback. The Seminoles are getting back comfortable with some of their top people. And here is Sammy Smith on first down. Let's chart the Seminoles from a possession and drive standpoint. First the touchdown over only two plays, the long pass. Then they had some plus yardage and a fumble after eight plays. Four plays to go 80 yards for a score. They missed a field goal after a half dozen plays. And then five plays took them to another touchdown. And then there was the late field goal. Out to the left side. That is Lawrence Dawsey, a 6'1 sophomore out of Dothan, Alabama. So they can throw some receivers at you. A 13-yard gain there. And that'll move the chains out to near midfield. Peter Tom Willis can drill the ball against the man-to-man -man defense. Not a touch type thrower like Chip Ferguson. He came in as a freshman with Chip Ferguson, and they had to play Chip a little bit before they had to play Peter Tom Willis. And this guy was recruited at the same time. Fullback is Dane Williams. Florida State will run their offense, and I think uh, if you're wondering back out there why do they pass, a lot of what the defense does dictates what the offense does, and if, if you think they're running up the score, they would like to score because that's the nature of offensive football, but the Bobby Bowden will run his offense throughout this game, so if you see the ball in the air and, and them driving for the goal line, it's not a matter of running up the score as much as it is just running the offense. Bobby Bowden did tell us yesterday that he placed a phone call after the 66-3 win over Louisiana Tech to the Tech head coach Joe Peace apologizing not for the score but for throwing the football right to the end of the game. All four of his quarterbacks, Willis, Ferguson, Casey Weldon, and Brad Johnson threw touchdown passes in that game. 
that's what he was sorry about, not the fact that he scored 66. Well, remember, too, it's a wide-open offense. They do a lot of crazy things as a matter of course. Second and six at the 45 of South Carolina. Sammy Smith, as he bumps through there, you can see some of the size on him. He's 6'2", 224, a junior. Marty Dye and Theardis Wooder, left tackle and nose guard, in on the stop. Sammy had 123 yards a game as a junior, was an honorable mention All-American. Two years ago, was a freshman All-American. This year, injuries have put a stop to him. Tough year for him. Third down and four. Peter Tom Willis with a little touch pass out to the left side for Lawrence Dawsey. Dawsey came in with nine catches. He's been a busy man lately. Right outside linebacker David Taylor in on the stop. Some more rough stuff over on the sidelines. I think what you said, Bobby, here is the key. You're looking at the release time here. It's a short drop and then the touch. He's got defender in his face and he lays the ball over. Peter Tom Willis, we talked about him in the open, how he would respond. He has responded continually. He's done a great job tonight. They should be proud of him down there. There was a flag on the play. Dead ball. Personal foul on the defense. Mm. First down. Personal foul. Well, there's just no way South Carolina can keep giving up yards on plays like that. One of the things we talked about last week, Jolie Dunn again, we talked about they came out flat throughout the year a number of times. They won that game at NC State, had a brilliant defensive game plan, but it, it might be said that they might have come out flat tonight in the first quarter. I don't see how you can come out flat after that opening entrance. Yeah. Inside the 15, Dane Williams, the fullback, pounding straight ahead for a couple. You see the offensive lineman unpiling, Mike Morris, Joey Ionata, Pat Tomberlin, big number 72 there, the All-American. There is a theory about emotion. Too much emotion before a game is not good for you. Uh, some people say, I never did agree with that. I, I thought the teams that really get pumped up played better, but there is a theory about that, that you can get too emotional and then flatten out right away during a game. Second down and eight, Terry Anthony and Lawrence Dawsey in as receivers. They're looking across the middle, and Dawsey is into the end zone. Lawrence Dawsey slanting in for a 13-yard touchdown reception, and it'll go to 37-0. And who the ever the coaches are who vote in the UPI poll, and a lot of coaches watch these Saturday night games, Kevin. They've got to be very impressed with FSU right now. Right, impressed, impressed, and with a backup quarterback. Now Peter Tom Willis thrown 47 passes coming into this game. There was major concern by the people at uh, Florida State of whether or not he could do the job, and he has done it. Richie Andrews now, 42 for 42, 5 for 5 tonight. It's 38 nothing. Well, they use motion outside, and then Willis again with all that pressure, a perfect pass to Dawson. Now, Dawson, he's going to come in on a quick post, and the ball delivered perfectly. Nice timing Mark. pattern to the 6-1 sophomore. 38 nothing. the Seminoles. Yeah, they're on the road. We're not a company. But we'll give you a chance to work where there's always a challenge. We'll give you opportunities to learn, to develop. To perfect skills that you thought were beyond your reach. We'll help you build a career. A career that can reward you for the rest of your life. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Army. The Navy. The Air Force. The Marines. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. GM makes the dream. GMAC makes the dream yours. With either financing or smart lease, custom tailored to fit your budget. Right at your GM dealers. The dreams of America. GMAC. You wouldn't believe the stuff my dad had to do to get his hands on his dream machine. You name it, he'd do it. Here's my dream machine. 
the new Cutlass Supreme. And all I had to do to get one was go to my old dealer. This is Three, not two, your father's old mobile. Ignition. This is the new generation. Wow! Buy a new 89 Cutlass Supreme by November 30th and get $500 cash back. Tonight's game is being brought to you by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. By the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by Transamerica. For insurance and financial services, the power of the pyramid is working for you. The power of offense, defense, and special teams working for the Seminoles tonight. 38-0. The kickoff goes to Robert Brooks inside his own 10-yard line. And he is twisted around and hammered to the turf. Eventually back at the 14. His progress will be stopped at the 19. Big hit for Alan Stewart, the cornerback. Seven plays in just over two and a half minutes, covering 67 yards. Officially a 12-yard pass from Willis to Dossie. Now, Bob Ellis, at this moment, what I'm trying to accomplish is I'm trying to improve. I'm trying to eliminate interceptions, maybe dump the ball a few times, get rid of it out of bounds, not throw into coverage. This is an important half for him. First down at the 19. Backs are split. Ellis on the run. A short one straight ahead for Robert Brooks. South Carolina's possession chart of the first half will not be a pretty printout. Four plays for a fumble, seven to an interception, three to a block punt that turned out to be a touchdown, five to another INT. Then they finally were able to kick it away cleanly. Another interception after seven plays, and then another kick. Just a nightmare of the first half. Second and five at the 24. Ellis double pumps, reaching for it, Eddie Miller. The two of them hooked up for a touchdown pass in Raleigh a week ago. Not that time. It'll be third down. You can see Ellis. He's yelling at somebody. I would guess it would be Miller. That was a very well-thrown ball, and Miller stopped and didn't take the extra step. He didn't run into the ball. He didn't run into the pass. He stopped, and the ball appeared to be thrown out in front of him. It was an excellent pass. Again, Eric Hayes, Odell Haggins, and Steve Gabbard with pressure up front. First time they've all been healthy since the Miami game to open the season. Third and five. Here they come, and Ellis hurried on the play. Anthony Parler, the intended receiver, but all over the quarterback again was Steve Gabbard up front, number 76. Down to the sidelines, here's Chris Fowler. Okay, Bob, we told you how much Deion Sanders likes to communicate with the other players in the team and, and also with the fans. He was back here suggesting that the South Carolina fans go back and demand their money back because the game was so lopsided. He's disappointed. I think he wanted a close game with a big hostile crowd, Bob. Well, Deion knows all about money. He got 60 grand out of George Steinbrenner. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and some, some, Hold up. some don't think he has Return. any plans at all to play baseball. Back at the 42-yard line, Dion has it. And negative yardage on that return, as getting him on that play was Mike Tolbert, number 87, the defensive end with action on the special teams. 38 yards on the kick. Tolbert gets him for a minus two on the tackle. Saturday, ESPN, your home for college football, beginning at 11.30 Eastern with College Game Day. Tim Brando and Bino Cook host the most comprehensive hour in college football. Then at 4.30, game number one of our doubleheader, our CFA action as Pittsburgh taking on Penn State. And then following that, we'll announce a little bit later what our 8 p.m. Eastern primetime game will be next Saturday. We're waiting till the last possible moment to choose the best game for you. Flag on the play. We had a clip. How can there be time to clip on a minus two yard return? There's always time to clip. That was tremendous coverage by Tolbert, and that'll be, that may be the highlight on the highlight film this week. Peter Tom Willis, a final look to the bench and then to the field. Bobby Bowden in this situation will get a chance to use some people as well. Victor Floyd, number 27, is out there. A senior tailback who was their number one rusher two years ago and had a huge game against South Carolina. 200 yards plus. Chris Parker is also in there with Victor Floyd, so you have the senior and the freshman. Floyd is the fullback. Parker behind him. 
unloading it. And even when they are under pressure, it turns into a beautiful play. Bruce Lassane with the diving catch. Well, this is excellent defense by the Gamecocks. They're going to get pressure on Peter Tom at the corner. That's Taylor. He throws it up for grabs, but it just happens to hit over Rabune's head and in front of the cornerback. Here's Taylor. This is the closest thing they've gotten to pressure, and this is a pressure defense all night. Everybody coming, and the ball just falls in and is caught by Lassane. An excellent uh, excellent something. I guess it was excellent defense and a, and a good catch by Lassane. Yes, it was. <laughs> First down, deep, deep drop, and they screen it right side for Reggie Johnson. And flags fly as Johnson tumbles over the 45. Reggie Johnson. Flag down. A nice job by Dale Campbell, caught out there by himself. On the offense. It'll be another clip, and this one will negate that nice gain. Officials will mark it off. Back inside the 30-yard line, back to the 27. Now, Peter Tom Willis, an inch taller than Chip Ferguson. He goes 6'3", 192. They've got a couple of good freshmen on the way here as well with Casey Weldon and Brad Johnson, who stands 6'6". He also plays on the Seminoles basketball team. You see total plays there by each team, but the score does not reflect that. It's because Florida State has scored on most of those. First and 18, ball on the ground and covered by Joey Iannata, the left tackle, the fifth-year senior. You know, it's typical to have a loss of concentration in a game like this when you're ahead. The defense or the losing team will get angry. The offensive team gets passive. You lose the edge. You have a lot of new people in there. And that's something that a coach needs to guard against, but it's a very difficult thing to overcome. It just happens. Ayanata, Kuypers, and others. You know, only West Virginia has more experience of any offensive line in the country in games started. Coming in, Florida State's combo had 136. West Virginia had 170. Out to the left side, and that's Scott DeMario, wide receiver. And he's out over the 40-yard line. DeMario, a six-foot junior out of Miami, doesn't even show up on the depth chart. But when it's 38-0, lots of people start showing up. Well, you give this one again to Willis. He's going to get pressure. DeMario comes clean right way. See Rabune trying to get over there. But it was Willis that read it. He got pressure immediately, got the ball out in a hurry, and he was open. Patrick Blackwell coming up to make the hit. Peter Tom Willis, look at that. 15 of 18. He's hitting five of every six. And there's Bruce Lassane, who on the crisscross a moment ago cut inside. He makes the catch this time. Back downstairs to Chris Fowler. Okay, Bob, Ronald Lewis, the flanker for the Seminoles, is not going to return tonight. He has a bruised AC joint. So go to your medical dictionary and look that one up. It's actually what connects the collarbone to the shoulder. He won't be back, but he smiled and told me to uh, make sure we tell his mom he's going to be okay. Back upstairs. Looks all right. It has not been a pretty night for the home team question is whose blood is that it's okay if it's not your blood <laughs> first and ten at the 49 35 Chris Parker look at him run for a first down across the 40 down inside deeper into Gamecock territory and this one is totally getting out of hand well, three seconds after that ball was handed off David Taylor was still chasing Willis he thought he still had it Joe Lee Dunn, the defensive coordinator, looked upon as a genius a week ago. He is one of the most innovative defensive coaches in the country. There's no doubt about that. Well, Albert Einstein couldn't coach defense when you turn the ball over your first five possessions. <laughs> I don't know. What do you do against that? <laughs> first and ten at the 37. All the time he needs. High toward the end zone. And holding on for the score is Lawrence Dawsey. A flag lays at the three-yard line, probably on the defense anyway, and Dawsey puts it away. 37 yards on the touchdown throw. Yeah, 
it really hurts them to lose Ronald Lewis, doesn't it? <laughs> Well, the, one of the keys to this game, Bobby, as you look at Joe Lee, is the pressure. If you're going to run that type of defense, I've said it all night, there's the extra point, 45. You have got to get to the quarterback. And here's Taylor. They're coming with a full blitz. Ayanada's got him. That leaves Willis time to float the ball. Look at the time he has in there. All right, here you are from the end zone, the back of the thing. And Willis just standing there, and he's going to float. This thing is an ugly pass. It's a helicopter all the way. And that catch, that's just an incredible catch. Pass interference, touchdown. 45 nothing. Seminoles are rolling. We're not a company, but we recognize potential. We develop it. We use it. We'll make sure that as your responsibility grows, so will you. As your ability for leadership grows, so will you. Working with us, you'll gain self-confidence, become a person with a future. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Marines, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Putting 2001, every seat filled and all that noise. A lot of the noise will be the startup of ignitions here in the next few minutes out in the Columbia parking lot. That's how many is left out of 75,000. 2001. Wow. <laughs> Mass exodus here, but who can blame them? Some of the Gamecocks don't even have their shoulder pads on anymore. Peter Tom Willis getting a little uh, oh, congratulations and encouragement from the coaches upstairs. They're saying, now here's how we're going to score next time. The goal line, it's Robert Brooks, and he will down it right there. Let's talk about the top five in the nation. The Associated Press Poll. Notre Dame, Southern Cal, Miami, West Virginia. They were all big winners today, so this could be a week even with a huge win here where FSU simply cannot move up. Yeah, but uh, things get wins like this, so remember, it's still in the hunt, of course, means for the national title. Notre Dame, Southern Cal are both undefeated, but of course they play each other. We'll talk about that a little bit more here after this play. Bobby Bowden with a lead of 45 to nothing as the South Carolina offense has Ellis pitching to Harold Green. Haven't seen Harold in a while. Odell Haggins, the nose guard, in on the stop after a gain of just two. But Bobby Bowden's hope is he can just hang around a little bit. And Kevin, looking at his schedule after tonight, he should finish 10-1 and one with Virginia Tech and then a struggling Florida team left both at home. Yeah, it looks like that. And I was talking about the top two, of course, Notre Dame and and uh, Notre Dame and USC, one of those teams are going to lose because they play each other. And you have Miami hanging in there. West Virginia undefeated, looking for a shot at the top team. Maybe Notre Dame and then Florida State hanging around. And the pass complete to Harold Green. The stop made by Leroy Butler. Yeah, and then if you got that crazy scenario unfolding where... Notre Dame gets beaten by Southern Cal, then they get beaten by UCLA. Miami could be number one going into their bowl, and who knows if they end up playing at home like they did a year ago, the Big 8 champion could have a shot. The scenarios are many. The bottom line, nowhere in sight. Well, West Virginia could go undefeated and not win the national title, and somebody's going to have a lot of West Virginians at their door if they win the national title, and West Virginia hasn't lost it. <laughs> Some Mountaineers. Yep. First and ten at the 40. It's Harold Green again. And he is hugged down to the ground by Odell Haggins. Back to the studio. Here's Tim Brando. All right, Bob. And it's time now for our Panasonic video replay of the day. And who better? Are you ready for Barry? Barry Sanders. Boy, he came to play in the spotlight today, didn't he? His first chance on national TV, 38 carries, 215 yards, and a couple of touchdowns, and a three-point loss to Oklahoma. Bob? What a day for Barry Sanders, who has to be one of the top three Heisman candidates. Flags on the play, a couple of scuffles taking place. Take a look at the nose guard. 
who is off sides here. This is just being over anxious. A lot of times you find yourself listening to the snap count when you shouldn't. Point is, the ball's right there. If the ball doesn't move, you don't move. The thing is there, he's taking a gap, I think. The defense was he was supposed to go to the gap, so he was just jumping early. Now they're going to say they were drawn off? Yeah, that was a snap count. That's what it was. It was a snap count. He probably changed the snap count. Maybe somebody batted their eyes a little heavy. I, I played in a lot of these on the... Uh, Offsides, on the defense, dead ball, personal foul, wow. on the offense. Still second down. Oh, there you go. We had a scuffle taking place in the secondary downfield a bit. So the clock reads second and 14 at the 35 with 629 remaining in the third quarter. It's 45 nothing Florida State. I was going to say I played a lot of these on the wrong end of them and it's a very very tough uh, but you do you get kind of relaxed and then you start taking shots at people not illegal shots but late shots because you haven't gotten to hit anybody the whole game. We'll call it a long 14. Harold Green from Todd Ellis. Deion Sanders, Felton Hayes, and others in the white jerseys wrapping him up. There's Hayes, number 46. Felton limps around now and then. He's got chronic jumper's knee, as the coaches call it. 6'1 senior out of Brandon, Florida. It's a linebacker with jumper's knee. That's the first I've heard of that one. Well, I guess that's better than a free safety having jumper's knee. Well, I mean, a 233-pound guy shouldn't be able to jump to begin with. This need to be struck. Third and 14. Harold Green tipping it. Then a touch for the defensive player. 89, Howard Dinkins. And it'll be fourth down and time to kick for the Gamecocks. On a frustrating nothing night for them. Dion back to get it. Sanders is standing at his own 27. Rodney Price knocks it to the 30. Sanders nothing there. 34 yards on the kick. Four yards on the return. Curtis Godwin, the takedown. 45 nothing. Seminoles. <coughs> new quarterback. Florida State has a new quarterback in the game. Freshman Casey Weldon, number 11. And on his first snap, he went deep to Bruce Lassane. Well, Weldon again, it's, it's, it's that defense again. They're giving it to him on first down. Now watch Lassane. Lassane has a 33-inch vertical jump. Baker's a freshman trying to guard him. Loses sight of where he is on the field. Lassane just goes up for it, gets it, and they're inside the 20. Or just, yeah, they're inside the 20 on the 16. With the 53-yard pass play, Casey Weldon, 6'1", 192, a redshirt freshman out of Tallahassee. A high school All-American quarterback in North Florida Christian High. He can run. He's a 4-6-40 man. And he is a good sprint out passer. That time he went pocket and threw a deep. First and 10 at the 16. On the exchange, it was never made cleanly. The ball is on the ground. And finally, Patrick Hinton of South Carolina comes up with it. And the Gamecocks recover a slippery football. That ball looked like it got thrown through there the way it was skirting along. That is the old grease pig here. I don't know how it got to where it got. The ball's loose right there. Look at Hinton, 46. He eventually wound up with it. He got blocked all the way back. The ball gets kicked to him, and he just picks it up. Hinton had four turnovers last week, or collected four. He collects another one, but just because he happened to be standing there. So it'll be first and ten at the three of South Car of South Carolina. 442 remaining in the third quarter of play. Todd Ellis back to work again. Give us to the deep man Mike Dingle. Todd Ellis, of course, a great competitor. However, sometimes it gets him into a bit of trouble. We asked him about being more patient. 
Well, I think it's always been tough for me uh, just because of the fact that I am a competitor. Uh, I kind of got a, a linebacker mentality, and uh, that's not good or anything I'm proud of. Uh, the thing that I've had to learn is that uh, I've got to wait uh, sometimes for my turn to get a big play. It's not always going to be when I think it's going to be. Uh, sometimes they're going to have me in their grasp just by their calling defenses. They work all week, watch film, and uh, you know we're not always going to hold up in protection. I've got to learn to eat the ball a little bit more, throw it away uh, in pressure situations. And that time he gives it to Mike Dingle on second and eight. And, and Todd Ellis's defense, a uh, new defensive, a new offensive coordinator right. outgrow this year. They ran the run and shoot for two years. It's a new. Uh, he had to start when he was a freshman. They threw him in the fray. He has tremendous talent. Nobody doubts that. But he has some, had some difficulty adjusting, and it must be real difficult for him to stand up there and talk about his own mistakes the way he does. He's a real nice kid, and uh, he's got another year. Third and short. And Mike Dingle easily for the first down. Following our game tonight, John Saunders will stop by on Sports Center to bring you the top 20 wrap up and bring you up to date on the rest of the day in sports. And then at 1130, a baseball special, the Major League Baseball 1988 Japan All-Star Tour. A team of Major League stars led by World Series MVP Oral Hershiser will take on the Japanese All-Star team in Tokyo. The Reds' Danny Jackson will be the starter tonight. John Miller and Don Sutton have the action for you this evening at 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Mike Dingle. Mike Dingle again. Odell Haggins, the nose guard on the stop. No, I think we also might make the point after looking at Todd Ellis, this team is 7-2. and two. It's not like if we count this as a loss tonight, it's not like South Carolina is not a fine football team, and they've had some great years with Todd Ellis at quarterback, but... He does throw a lot of interceptions, but uh, nothing to be ashamed of. This is a good program. They have Navy here next week, and then a toughie in two weeks at Clemson. It'll be tough for them if they lose this one tonight to avoid being eight and three going to a bowl, because Death Valley is very difficult to win in. Mike Dingle spun around, put in the air, and finally landing. Nice hit by Brian David, an inside linebacker. One of the reasons you don't jump, 230-pound Dingle. Watch him jump. He takes his own legs, mm. and then he gets the hit by David there. And that, that's just a, uh, in the middle of the field, if you're jumping, if it's not a uh, third down play, as soon as you leave your feet like that, you've, you've lost all your momentum. You don't weigh anything. No, you turn yourself into a Thanksgiving wishbone in a hurry. Think bad things happen in the air. Third and three. Dingle cuts up. He has the first down. Leroy Butler, who's shown up some good hitting ability down there tonight, backing up Dedrick Dodge at free safety, in on the hip. Clock runs down to 142. They'll stop it momentarily to move the chains. You know, this one looks like it'll shape up as one of the worst ever results for South Carolina against Florida State. In 85 in Tallahassee, the Seminoles hammered these guys 56 to 14. Obviously tonight, not much yardage compared to what they normally do offensively. Back in 82 here, it was a 30-point win, 56 to 26. There's been one shutout in this series. That was back in 1967. And that went over the top as Leroy Butler knocks Robert Brooks down. There is a flag back to the line of scrimmage. Butler's a great story, aside from the, uh, the punt Ruski he ran back against Clemson. You see a penalty there on South Carolina. Butler comes from Jacksonville, and he lived in such a bad neighborhood when he was recruited that the coaches were afraid to go into his neighborhood to see him. He had to come out and meet him at an Exxon station and <laughs> escort him into the neighborhood. But he's overcome all of that. And there's your neighborhood shot. You go out to the parking meter, and I'll knock you into the grocery store, yeah. basically, there. Make a left turn between the two junkers and head for the curb. <laughs> Second and 10 at the 29. Ellis, big trouble. And finally, Eric Hayes takes care of him. 78, Odell Haggins, 53, helping out as well. Anytime you're in a position like this, 45 to nothing. They say the romance has gone out of the marriage here, folks. It's going to be a pass, and here comes the defense. 
And if you're playing defense, there's no better situation than this. You can just kind of have fun. And they're having fun, the Seminoles. Probably a play left in the third quarter, unless they go out of bounds in a hurry. Third and 19 with 25 seconds remaining. Forget it, Mike Dingle. Odell Haggins from Noseguard in on the stop. The remaining fans booing some. They're unhappy with the conservative third down call. So it's obvious the Florida State defensive three up front is definitely back. Well, Haggins has had a great game. Just incredible. Get these kind of athletes healthy and they can do some damage. The corner will end before they can get off the snap. We'll switch ends on a breezeless, cool evening in Columbia. 45 nothing. the Seminoles are red hot. A fender bender on the freeway. You? No, a guy, anyone. This is just to show how Wang's integrated image system will handle and claim. Adjuster comes out, takes a picture of the fender, signs off an adjustment, handwritten document, photograph, an image. I'll go back to home office via electronic mail. Touch a button, then you got a data window, text window, image window right in front of you. A guy in the field wants to verify the estimate. Click. The adjuster's handwritten report in the photo are on the screen processed in half the time. That's integrated imaging, and Wang has it. Another example, customer service. A guy calls EBC. Gillette has changed the face of shaving. First, we made it closer. Then, we made it smoother. Atra Plus. Its Lubra Smooth Strip actually releases lubricants to glide the razor more smoothly. Incredible smoothness from the first stroke to the last. The Atra Plus system. First, we made it closer, then we made it smoother. Announcing the Holiday Inn Make the Super Call game. Come to Holiday Inn, get a game card. Now, Super Bowl 18. Four minutes to go. Greater space, a fourth and goal. You call it. Scratch off the right play, and you win. Thousands of prizes. Even a trip to the Super Bowl. Everybody's getting into it. Only at America's favorite hotel. For reservations, make the Super Call. All airplanes are created equal, built by the same people. But after they're built, something happens. People don't think of all airlines in the same way. Just look at all the business flyers that have flown with us over the years. Maybe it's that we fly to more business centers. Or maybe it's how we fly to more business centers. United, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. Mr. Pitney, Mr. Bowes, Mr. Product, Mr. Service, Mr. Button Down, Mr. Button Up. One builds office systems, one builds customer relationships. The idea person, the people person. Every Pitney needs a Bowes. Most companies need them both. See how your mailroom copier facsimile and dictation systems can profit from the relationship. I have an incredible idea. You want customers need it? Punting time for South Carolina. Rodney Price will let it go from his 10. Nice high kick. It'll give the coverage team time. Deion Sanders, no chance for a return. Be with ESPN tomorrow, 11.30 a.m. for NFL game day. Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, Pete Axthelm, and John Saunders host the most comprehensive hour in the NFL. Then at 7, they're all back with highlights of every NFL game played on NFL prime time. And then at 8 p.m., our live coverage of NFL football continues when the Raiders take on the Chargers in an AFC West battle. The Raiders, of course, will be sporting their Heisman Troika of Marcus Allen, Bo Jackson, and Tim Brown. Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann will call it for you tomorrow night. Casey Weldon, still the quarterback for Florida State. Scott Damari, the intended receiver. Storyline Columbia. Four turnovers leading to four scores by the visiting team. A lot of yards passing for Florida State. The Seminoles have not kicked the football except a lot of kickoffs and extra points and one field goal here tonight. There's Peter Tom Willis. What a night for him, Kev. Unbelievable, 17 of 20. He was a key. He came through out Grove from uh, Carolina. Said he didn't want to game a big play, but that's what it's been for State. Shane Cox 
trying to come, but a long count got him offside. Marty Dye, redshirt freshman, left tackle, first man across the line. I know it looked like offsides to me, guys. I don't know what the long discussion is about. Whether or not they were drawn off, there was about six of them offsides. We have no foul. We have a false start by the offense caused by a defensive man in the neutral zone. No foul. That's a nice call at 45 to nothing. That's a do-over. Not tonight it isn't. Second and ten at the 44. Now Florida State, Casey Weldon calling a timeout. You know, when you're playing defense in a game like this, it, the offensive guys are all subs. They're as serious as they can be. They want to look good. They're trying hard, and you're just just annoyed, unhappy. See, look at Weldon. Look at look on Weldon's face. I mean, he's trying to impress. He wants to be. He wants to play. He's got guys in there that want to, to look good on the films. And uh, and defensively, you're losing 45 to nothing, and that's aggravating. Real well, aggravating. We know one guy that is still here at the park tonight, even though a lot of folks have headed for home. That's our partner down on the sidelines, Chris Fowler. We'll be hearing from him momentarily. We've got 14:42 remaining in the football game. 45 for Florida State. A big zero for South Carolina. 19 bowl scouts from 10 different bowls here this evening. There have been scenarios mentioned that if South Carolina would win this game, they of course could be in line for a major bowl. These are the ones represented here tonight. With a loss, they've been rumored to be going to places like Memphis, maybe to Birmingham, maybe to Atlanta. That would be the Liberty Bowl, the Peach Bowl, or the Hall of Fame Bowl. And this is obviously a loss, so those are the considerations for South Carolina, evidently. Second and ten at the 44. Warren Stasi on the end around, and he is inside the 40, fighting his way down to the 32-yard line. Pat Turner, who came into the game injured at free safety, now being required to play despite a groin pull. 27 yards on the game. Now this thing takes a long time to develop, but of course, when you play Florida State, this is part of what they do. This is not necessarily running the score up. Dawsey around the end. One black shirt. That's Taylor. He's out of there. Missed tackle. Finally, McKiernan comes along. And they get him out of bounds, but that's part of their offense. And uh, those of you not familiar with Florida State, that's base offense for them. It's not running the score up. First down at the 31. Victor Floyd. One of those experienced senior tailbacks we talked about earlier. There is a flag on the play. And to the sidelines, we'll go to Chris Fowler. Okay, Bob, with the game on the field out of hand, we turn to the somewhat less physical battle of the media guides two of the best in the country here florida state won the media guide national championship last year south carolina came in third kind of a battle between burt reynolds who appears in the florida state guide and the pope and pearl bailey whose picture both appear in the south carolina guide congratulations to the sports information staffs of both schools battle of the media guys fellas all right I think you need to hold them up a little higher chris you can just about see you <laughs> Some folks may not know what a media guide is. That's the book they send out to reporters, television, radio people, covering the team to tell us more about the teams. It's Lawrence Dawsey out to the left side, and the sophomore is having a big night. Stephon Williams on the stop. Almost a hundred yards through the air. He's also rushed it for 65. Yeah, time to get a drink on a cool night. It's like been pick, picking apples, picking oranges here tonight. The yards have come real easy tonight for Florida State. First down at the 17. Casey Weldon, the freshman quarterback, to the corner. And just off the fingertips of Bruce Lassane. 